You bought a rental property, maybe you fixed it up a bit, you listed it for rent, and you found an amazing tenant. But now you have to collect the security deposit and you've got a lot of questions. Don't worry, we've got you. What's up guys, Kyle and Lauren here from Rentals to Wealth, and we're gonna do a deep dive on rental property security deposits. If you're ready to learn, hit that like button and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. So you finally found the perfect tenant and you're all set to sign the lease, but you're not quite clear on how to move forward with collecting the security deposit. You're already watching this video, which is a good first step because it shows you're ready to treat this rental business like an actual business. Nothing screams newbie investor like having a trashed unit at the end of a lease and not having a security deposit to handle those repairs. Or not collecting the security deposit and guaranteed funds. I hate to say it, but we've made this mistake once. We had a potential tenant sign a new lease and pay the security deposit with a personal check. The move-in date wasn't for another three weeks or so, so we knew we had time for the check to clear before the move-in date. But of course, the check bounced. Fortunately, they didn't move in yet, so we were able to just avoid that potentially bad situation altogether, but it was a nice slap on the wrist to make sure we never made that mistake ever again. In this video, we're gonna cover what a security deposit is, how it should be collected from the tenant, how much you should charge, the difference between a security deposit and a fee, and security deposit laws. Let's dive in. We're packing a lot in in this video, aren't we? A security deposit is money that a tenant agrees to place with a landlord during their tenancy to guarantee their compliance with the lease and state and local laws. It also holds the tenant accountable to return the property to its original move-in condition, minus reasonable wear and tear, of course, when they move out. The key thing to remember here is that a security deposit is the tenant's money, not the landlord's. This is not extra income. The purpose of these funds is to encourage positive behavior on behalf of the tenant. Now that we know what a security deposit is, let's move on to how it should be paid. It is a best practice to only accept the security deposit from a new tenant with guaranteed funds. You should not allow a new tenant to write a personal check, so don't do what we did. Imagine the situation you could be in if a week into your new tenant's lease, you discover that their security and rent check has bounced. Now you're stuck dealing with a potential eviction and no money is leveraged. You could easily avoid the situation by requiring all move-in funds to be made in a money order or cashier's check. The next question is, how much should you charge? As a landlord, you set the amount to be charged for each individual property. Since security deposits act as a safeguard for the landlord, it is wise to require as much as your market will allow and is legally permitted by law. Some states have a limit for the maximum a landlord can charge, so definitely be sure to do your research. For example, here in New Jersey, where we invest, landlords can charge an equivalent of one and a half months rent for the security deposit. Now, on to the difference between a deposit and a fee, because there is a big difference. The short answer is a deposit is refundable, whereas a fee is not. Where would this come into play? So a good example is when it comes to pets. Some landlords may only charge one month's rent for security deposit, but increase it to a month and a half when the tenant does have a pet. This money is refundable as long as the property is returned in its original condition minus normal wear and tear. Other landlords may charge a pet fee in addition to security deposit. This fee is paid up front to the landlord for the privilege of having a pet on the premises. This fee is non-refundable and the landlord could do with it as they wish. Bear in mind that whether something is a refundable deposit or a non-refundable fee, it needs to be clearly outlined in your lease. Let's close this out with some security deposit law. We are not lawyers, so this should not be considered legal advice. Each state has different specific laws when it comes to security deposits. Be sure to research your state and your local laws, consult an attorney, and do your homework. So today we learned what a security deposit is, how to collect it, and how much to charge. Hopefully you're leaving feeling a little bit more knowledgeable and ready to sign a new lease. Have you had any security deposit fails? Share your story in the comments below and hit that like button if you want more property management tips. And if you want to follow along with us on our investing journey, head on over to our YouTube channel, Rentals to Wealth. We'd love to have you there with us. See you guys in the next one.